Hey kids, Mr. Fly here, hope you're well, and welcome to part two of Bike News for April 2019. Uh, another couple of uh, issues of MCN to go through uh, to get you up to date with the Bike News uh, here from the UK for April 2019, as I say. If you've not seen part one, by the way, you might want to go back and watch that first. If not, stick around and stay tuned. All right, then let's get straight into it uh, for uh, part two of Bike News. Thank you for uh, tuning in again. All right, first story that uh, I've picked up here, another electric bike, a bit of an electric theme to start with on uh, part two of the Bike News here. This machine is from a company called Arc, and it's called the uh, Arc Predator, I think it's called. It certainly looks like a Predator. No, it's called the Arc Vector. This is called the Arc Vector, and it looks a bit like a Predator from the film Predator. And the reason why I mentioned this bike is not because I think it's a particularly practical bike, because the price of this bike is going to be uh, something ridiculous, £90,000 when it comes out um, but what I like about this bike is the is the design of it the fact that they've not made it look exactly like an internal combustion engine bike like we talked about in part one um, with the uh, with the lightning strike which looks like a conventional motorcycle this thing looks different which I like about it um, uh, so hats off to them praise for making it look like something a little bit different uh, I understand why these electric bike manufacturers make uh, electric bikes look like conventional machines so a bit more acceptable to us maybe so there's not so much uh, change in one go but this one I like the look of how practical it is to ride I don't know maybe that um, quotes fuel tank will get in the way a bit of your leaning over the bike I don't know but I think it looks mean uh, the thing is with this it's going to be um, it's going to have a 362 mile range apparently which is just absolutely incredible and a 399 volt electric motor putting out 133 brake horsepower yet only weigh 220 kilograms so sounds good on paper it's actually going to be built in Wales there's not its impression here of the uh, arc facility in Wales it's going to be a 30,000 feet uh, sorry 65,000 square feet factory they're building to make it and uh, they're hoping to start production in 2020. That said, part of the funding is like a crowdfunding campaign, so we may never see it. I, I wish them the best of luck, I hope they do. Uh, I ain't gonna be riding one at 90,000 pounds, but it's an incredible looking machine. All right, keeping the, um, the electric theme, move to our second story here. Now this is uh, the new bike from Zero, the SRF, which we have talked about here on Bike News before. Uh, now this is an incredible uh, looking uh, machine. I think this looks, it looks beautiful. It looks, again, it does look like an internal combustion machine, so I'm going against a bit from what I said just now, but uh, this looks great. I rode the Zero uh, DSR uh, last year, and uh, actually, unfortunately, I fell off it and bent it, which is a bit of a shame, but uh, uh, this bike, I think, looks even better than that did, and the DSR didn't look too shabby. Um, and this one, uh, more importantly, has got traction control and ABS on it. It's got it's the Bosch lean angle sensitive traction control. So if the bike I'd ridden last year had that, I don't think I would have fallen off it because I went around a corner, wound the throttle on, the bike just slid away from me uh, because of their tremendous torque. This bike shouldn't suffer from that. As I say, it's called the SRF, amazing bit of kit. It's quite expensive, uh, something like £19,990 for the version that gives you the best range. Um, but if you, bought, if you want to buy the bike with uh, using you know, the standard model and you use the government grant, because they'll give you um, something like £1,600 or £1,500 off the bike, sorry, the basic model you'll be able to get for £16,490. So it's getting within the realms of acceptable, although it's still not as good value as that lightning strike we saw in part one, which was less than ten grand. Um, but this does look beautiful. Uh, it's got top quality components on it, and as I say, most importantly, that traction control, which I'm looking forward to trying, because... Um, Zero very kindly said that they're going to lend me one of these bikes later in the year. I cannot wait to ride this bike. I think of all the bikes that I've got lined up to ride through this season, this is probably the one I'm most excited about because I really did like the DSR until I fell off it. Um, this one, uh, I think, has probably fixed the one foible that that bike had. So really looking forward to riding that. But uh, there we go. Don't poo-poo electric bikes until you've ridden one. Uh, I, you know, I love internal combustion engines as much as the next person. I love the vibration. I love the noise. Um, I love the mechanics, everything about them. I'll always have an internal combustion engine. Uh, motorcycle in my garage because I'm an enthusiast um, but you know if you've not ridden an electric bike don't poo poo them until you've had a go they're just uh, they just offer something different that an, an, a normal engine bike doesn't offer you just tremendous speed it feels like you're flying they're they amazing anyway uh, next story here oh yeah this guy Henry uh, Henry Green's his name he's 23 he's just been uh, around the world on his motorbike I'll talk more about him in a minute because he comes up again in uh, in the next edition of the paper so I'll park it there but uh, he's another around the world adventurer he's just got himself the record for the youngest person to go around the world at 23 so we'll talk a bit more about that in a moment all right next story here Okay, Radical Rocket Prototype Spy. This is a story I'm really interested in because uh, the new Rocket 3 from Triumph is a bike that I think might have to be the next one to adorn my garage, unless something happens in the meantime or something else comes out. It won't be imminent because uh, it's going to take me a while to save up and I'm doing the thing with the wife where I'm having to work on her. 
But um, this is now a spy shot of the uh, what we think is the production bike uh, as is, because of course Triumph brought out the TFC version. They announced that a while back, didn't they? The one with all the carbon bling and so on. And that's probably going to be very expensive. They're going to make an announcement. They say on May the 1st about the cost of the TFC bike. And I'm hoping they're going to talk more about this standard production bike as well then, uh, and maybe give us an idea of cost. I'm thinking the TFC one might be around about the 20 grand mark. I'm assuming this one, the standard bike might be around the 15. I don't know. I'm guessing I don't have any insider knowledge, but to me, it just looks absolutely fantastic i imagine it sounds amazing uh, i imagine it goes incredibly uh, the only issue for me of course is the how far forward are your feet going to be because i don't like the feet forward position hopefully there's a mid um position for your feet you can go as well the pegs on this one don't look too far forward so that's great um mcn are saying that uh triumph are going to look to keep the weight down to sub 350 kilograms so i mean that's a lot of weight anyway isn't it but let's do i hope they do keep it less than that because that's going to be a heavy bike you ain't going to pick up if you drop it but with a low center of gravity and a low seat should be should be all right um really looking forward to having a go on that i think the bike looks absolutely awesome it's one of very few bikes that have got me really excited uh, in the last few in the last few years i think it looks brilliant so uh, yeah looking forward to uh, hopefully having a go on one of those in the flesh and you never know maybe get one myself at some point if i can convince the missus it's a worthwhile investment all right next story from this paper adventure back in time now this is one of mcn's um, real world 250 mile tests that they do on a standard circuit that they do so they get to test bikes in the same conditions i think it's a great idea and they've pitted here the triumph scrambler 1200 xc against the uh, bmw r9t urban gs two sort of retro style sort of scrambler type bikes uh, and they, they're similar prices as well. The uh, the, G, the Urban GS 11480 in standard spec, the Triumph Scrambler 12300. Uh, so it seems like the BMW is a bit cheaper, but by the time you spec it up as normal, in fact, in the guys that BMW ride it here, uh, sorry, MCN ride it here, it's actually 12440, so a bit more expensive than the Triumph. So anyway, they ride them both around the, the, around the loop and come up with their conclusions. And I have to say, I haven't read the article, their conclusions are very similar to my own um in that i've ridden both these bikes as well i've been lucky enough to ride them both they say that the urban gs has got more character a bit more rock and roll with a boxer engine and so on it's a bit more true to sort of the retro thing it's got a, a proper dial on it for example as opposed to the tft that the scrambler's got but there's no getting away from the fact that, that the triumph scrambler is the more refined bike it's got uh, much more electronics you get a lot more for your money uh, it's a really refined ride on the triumph whereas the the bmw is more characterful but characterful in a good way because uh out of the two, I think I might prefer the R9T, but I don't know. Um, I'm, I love the Scrambler genre, and there's a, a number of potential candidate bikes in that area that if I were to buy a, a Scrambler bike, uh, which one would I go for? It would be between the R9T, the Scrambler, not the GS, uh, the Triumph um, version of the Scrambler, and in fact now the new Ducati 1100, of, of which more later. But anyway, um, they've given the Triumph Scrambler 1200 four out of five stars, and they've given the BMW R9T Urban GS Three out of five stars, and I, I, I overall agree with that. They say the Triumph wins overall, but the BMW wins on character. Both great bikes, you wouldn't be disappointed with either. I'd be happy to have either of those in the garage. They're lovely, lovely machines to ride. Alrighty, and here, for final story from this paper, Boxer Treats is the headline. This is the new BMW R1250R, another bike that I was lucky enough to ride just last week, and I posted my review last Thursday, I think. If you haven't seen that, go and look at the card or the link below, however I do it. Um, go and check out that review. It's a very popular bike. I posted some pictures of it when I was doing the review on my Facebook and Instagram um, sites, and uh, lots of people liked it. So I thought, actually, this is a bike that's got a lot of interest, and posted the video purposely early because of that. And it's already had something like 30,000 views or something. So it's obviously a very a bike that's got a lot of interest out there for it. Um, now, when um, the local BMW dealer, Barnstall, were phoned me and said, we've got the new R1250 um, R in for you to ride, um, I wasn't that excited because I rode the old R1200R. It's a perfectly good bike, nothing wrong with it at all, but it didn't like my fine. I didn't really particularly like the looks of it. There was nothing different about it that I thought was really great. Whereas this one, it looks a bit better. It still doesn't grab me like in the way that a Panigale does or, or a new R1 or indeed the new Rocket. Um, but it looks better, it's definitely improved. Um, but now with the new shift cam technology and that new 1250 engine, my goodness me, that bike absolutely flies. If you want to ride it slowly, you can do and it doesn't complain. If you want to open the taps up, then the thing really does shove. Now it's up there with the likes of the Triumph Speed Triple as proper bruising naked. In fact, I'd go so far as saying it's up there with the MT-10 and the uh, Super Duke R in, in terms of proper bruising naked bikes now. I mean, it's not intended to be one of those, I don't think. I think it's intended to be a sort of a good all-round bike, but uh, it's, it really does go fast now if you want to do with that shift cam. It's an amazing bike. It's given it's the same engine as the GS has got. It feels so much different in this bike. The handling's better, it's smoother, it's 
definitely feels faster to me. It really is a, a great bike. If you're just gonna be doing on-road stuff only and you only have one bike, this is definitely a bike to consider if you like the looks of it enough. Um, I think it's quite a handsome bike. It doesn't really grab me as I sound the looks front, but the ride really is good. Um, if you're in the market for a naked bike, do go out and check out the new R1250R. I think you're gonna like it. Really looking forward to riding the R1250RS when that becomes available as well, because that's a bike I do like the looks of a bit more than the naked version, and you'll have a bit more protection from the wind. But uh, anyway, the R, lovely, lovely bike, surprised me when I rode it. Alrighty, that's it for the uh, first paper of part two. One more to go, and then we'll get onto some uh, parish notices where I'll give you a bit of information about stuff that's uh, coming up on the channel in the next few days and weeks. So stick around, stay tuned for that. Ah, oh, good brew. Right then, final paper. And this is uh, hot off the press. This is this week's paper, came out on Wednesday. First story I've picked out here, Eakins Triumph under the hammer. Now this is Bud Eakins um, Triumph TR6 that's come up for auction with Bonhams. If you want to buy it, they're, they're sort of, it's got a guide price of anywhere between 20 and 30,000 pounds, although MCN say they think it might go for more. Now the reason why this bike is interesting is because Bud Eakins is the guy that rode the uh, bike that did that jump in the film The Great Escape that everybody thinks Steve McQueen did, but in fact it was Bud Eakins that did it. Now when he was off recording that Great Escape jump, he owned this Triumph TR6. So this isn't the bike you did it on, this happened to be the bike you had at the time. So it's very interesting. It's uh, languished in the Californian garden for the last 27 years or something. Um, so it hasn't been ridden much, it's unrestored, it's as it was. So it's quite, you know, it's a nice looking machine. Um, and it, you know, it's definitely got a bit of provenance and it's gonna probably get a lot of money. So we're gonna be interested to see how much that actually goes for. But uh, nice looking bike, uh, really nice. Okay, moving on. So we've got a spare 30 grand, you might wanna put a bid in for Bud Eakins. Anyway, um, Henry Crew, I mentioned him just now. This is the guy that's been around the world um, on his um, scrambler, finished up at the bike shed. He's been doing it in aid of the Movember Foundation, or whatever it's called, I think it's a mental health charity, so thumbs up to him. Well done for doing that, number one, for getting around the world. What an amazing adventure in just over a year, and for doing it for charity as well, top guy. Um, and very impressive moustache, I couldn't grow around those when I was 23, couldn't even grow one now, at twice his age plus. Anyway, uh, the reason why I mentioned him again is number one to say congratulations to you, Henry, and also just to contrast him with the uh, round the world adventurer I know most, youngster, who is of course Ben King. He's been at it for the last couple of years, we said cheerio to Ben, and he's now in Pakistan. Um, and he's gonna probably take another 10 years to get around. He's taken the approach of, rather than do it really fast, I'm gonna go around and enjoy it. So another way of doing it, I'm not saying either is right or wrong, so well done him as well. Uh, but great that these youngsters are doing these adventurous things and uh, uh, an absolutely cracking effort from Henry. So uh, well done for getting around the world on your scrambler. Great bike to do it on as well, by the way. I wasn't a big uh, scrambler 900 fan when they first came out, but as a practical round the world bike, actually it makes a lot of sense because you've got a bit of go and it's light enough to sort of get over some rough ground. Be interesting to see his story if he brings out a book or some videos or something. I should definitely be looking at those. Well done, him. Right, next story. Uh, if I can get at it, here we are. What have we got here? Oh, yeah, how to weed out dishonest sellers. Now, this guy, uh, Neil Murray, has a weekly column in MCN, talks about second hand bikes a lot. And in this particular article, he's talking about how do you go about selling your bike second hand, or indeed, how do you buy one, and how do you deal with test rides? Because, of course, there are a lot of chances out there, aren't there? If you uh, lend your second hand bike to somebody to go and test ride and they trash it and then give it back to you all damaged you're out of pocket or supposing they steal it you know how do you get actually get around that so he said what he would do if he's um if he's going to look at a second hand bike he'll um he'll tell them um you know if i bend it i buy it he'll look them in the eye and say that honestly and he'll hand them his like car keys as collateral so to speak that's the way he does it and that's one way of doing it i don't know what the right answer is which is partly why i mentioned this to you how do you deal with that if you're either buying a second hand bike and want a test ride how do you kind of guarantee to the person you're buying that you're not going to bend the bike or if you do you'll make it right uh, and also what about insurance uh, you know how do you prove you're covered and then uh, the other thing is if you're selling a second hand bike do you even offer test rides whenever i've sold second hand bikes i've said sorry no test rides you know if you, if you want it let's do the purchase go and ride it and then if you decide you don't want it i'll take the money back sort of within a day or whatever so that's one way i do it but i'll be interested to see if you've got any other ways that you do it that protects both you as a seller or you as a buyer uh, because it is a bit of a vague one that one a bit of a gray area of interest to know how you do that all right next story here touring's big three revolution is the uh, is the headline here and they've pitted the uh, yamaha nikon which we talked about in part one against the uh, bmw r1250 rt which is kind of the king of the tourers they sort of uh, well, I think it is anyway, I've ridden it, it's great, but I haven't ridden the Nikon. Uh, and they've put those two up against each other, the Nikon now in GT form, which is the sort of touring version. Uh, so they've uh, done their, again, their 250, their standard 250 mile loop, 
to get a feel for how both the bikes do. And uh, they give them the Nikon 3 out of 5 and the R1250RT 4 out of 5. Uh, funnily enough, having re obviously uh, read the article, they say the only fault really that they can put on the RT is the fact that it's not fitted yet with BMW's new TFT screen. And uh, I actually, I love the BMW TFT screen. I'm not completely sold on TFT screens per se, but the BMW one is the best one I've seen yet. But actually, in this case, I disagree with them. I actually quite like the existing screen on the RT. It's the best of both worlds. It's got like a color LCD bit and two big dials. Now I think on a big Tourer, that works absolutely fine. So I, I have no problem at all with the current... Um, instrument display if that's the right word on the RT I think it looks great but uh, that's the only thing they could find wrong with it uh, the Nikon on the other hand they said they felt like it was a bit um, you know with things like the center stand and the soft panniers and the bigger screen and the better uh, fuel range all felt a bit sort of bolted on to make it into a Tourer as opposed to the RT being designed as a Tourer in the first place and that obviously is the case so uh, so that's quite interesting so yeah the uh, RT kind of tramps the Nikon in its touring guys no big surprise i guess the rt is a lot more expensive as well okay so that's that one next up in this paper semi-active perfection now this is interesting this is uh, michael knees my favorite reviewer at mcn has been riding the brand new aprilia tuono v4 this is the one with a clever olin semi-active suspension i rode it i got to borrow a tuono a v4 relatively recently uh, and had it for a few weeks and really loved the bike it was amazing and for me uh, i mean the suspension that was on it was great but uh, nevesy here says how do you make an almost perfect bike even better is it even possible and he reckons they have pulled it out of the bag here he says the suspension is absolutely great on this now there are some other tweaks as well 170 three brake horsepower um, an amazing bike 17 grand though so quite expensive I think it looks beautiful I had a lot of people tell me when I did my reviews on this bike that they didn't think it looked very nice they didn't like the Aprilia written down the side and thought it was a bit gaudy I'm completely opposite I love a bit of bling I think it looks amazing uh, but Neves you think it is this is a you know a step up again he's saying basically if you only ride on the road you probably wouldn't um, notice that much difference but if you go on track that's when the Olin semi-active suspension really comes in and it's an absolutely great bike he reckons in fact he describes it as the most impressive sports bike money could buy and given it's not really a sports bike it's sort of a naked bike or if you like a sports bike with flat bars and a lesser fairing that is praise indeed isn't it I think it's a an amazing looking bike and it's a, apparently got even better so uh, Maybe we'll get a ride on one of them at some point. Really nice. Okay, moving on to the final story before we get on to the parish notices I want to tell you about. Uh, this is a regular article that MCN do called uh, The Bucket List. And they talk to, you know, cover things that you might want to do in your biking career. And this one is all about, you know, you've got to, you can't be a biker unless you've gone out there and ridden a Harley Davidson. And uh, this is something that's very close to my heart. I've never ridden a Harley Davidson. I would love to ride one. I need to get friendly with a Harley Davidson dealer and get somebody to let me have a go on one because I'd love a go on a Harley. And many people say to me, when are you going to review a Harley? So I promise I will put that right at some point. I just need to talk to Harley and, and sort that out. Um, but uh, yeah, so they're saying, you know, Harleys have got a bit of an image issue haven't they, in this country and many, um, many countries. In fact, some bikers look down their nose at them. They're saying keep an open mind, and I, I agree with them. I've got an open mind about them. Um, I love the way they, um, you know, the engineering in them, and I love the way they sound. You know, they might even ride good as well. Who knows? Um, they, but they do have this, um, you know, sort of uh, beardy leather jacket, Hell's Angel type um, image, don't they? Or American accountant, um, you know midlife crisis kind of image going, which I guess actually I know all about because I ride a GS, so, so I suffer from some of that as well. But uh, I'm keeping an open mind. I'm really looking forward to having a ride on one. They're saying that it's one of the things you should do. I mean, particularly if you're riding in America, a Harley would be, what a great trip that would be to do with it, riding a Harley in the US. That's something I would absolutely love to do. That'd be brilliant. Um, so yeah, anyone can make that happen for me. <laughs> Let me know, I'd love to do that. That'd be incredible. Anyway, I'm gonna locate a Harley dealer soon and I'm gonna go and ride a Harley and I'll bring you a review. So uh, yeah, I think that is something that should be on on the biker's bucket list. All right, that's it for the uh, final uh, paper in the news review. I said I was going to bring you some news about what's going on on the channel in the next uh, few uh, days and weeks, so let me just give you a few parish notices before we go. First off, must say yeah, thanks to Custom Fit Guards, who are the sponsors of this video and of my live stream videos. Uh, I always say thanks to them on these videos, but in particular this time, I want to mention them because they came and saw me uh, last week or the week before last and they uh, interviewed me in the garage and they're posting that uh, interview on their own uh, YouTube channel. Again, I'll put a link to it below in the description or a card, whatever way I can suss out to do it. Uh, I think that video may well be up by the time you see this or it's going to be up imminently. So go and look at their um, their YouTube channel. As I say, I'll put a link when it's available uh, and then you can go and see an interview with me. They talked about, uh, we talked about 
bikes in general, my bikes in general, how I got into it, all that kind of thing, YouTube in general. Uh, you may find it interesting. Uh, so do go and check out uh, that video as soon as it's up. And thank you to those guys for sponsoring uh, the channel. Um, talking of sponsors, um, I don't know if you remember, a while back, a few weeks back, I did a video reviewing the Visor Cat, which is the little gadget I wear on my left hand to clean my visor. It's something I've been using for a couple of months now. I, I get on really well with it, and uh, I think it's a great little bit of kit. Um, uh, I'm really pleased to say that those guys have come on board to sponsor me now. So as of May, you'll start to see their logos on the start and finish of my video. So thank you to VisorCat for getting on board and sponsoring. Uh, I don't get involved with any um, companies that I don't personally rate. Uh, uh, so, you know, VisorCat, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the product, and, uh, you know, I'm really pleased that they're sponsoring me. So just mention that because you'll see their, their logos appearing on the start and finish of videos, as I say, from May the 1st. Coming up on the channel, uh, I've got another Biker Scram with Jeff and Dan on the May the 2nd and the 4th. It's a two-parter. It's an absolute cracker. Um, that's coming up. So if you like those that series, stick around for that. Uh, I've got the review of the Ducati Scrambler 1100. I hinted at that one already. That's coming up. Um, and then I've got the start of my brand new um, bike tour series on the, I think it's the 4th or the 9th of May, the first uh, of that series goes up. I'm riding um, in Tuscany with Tuscany Motorcycle Tours. It was an absolutely amazing trip. Um, so if you like my tour videos, there's a new series of those coming up. Keep a look out for that. I've got more coming up on the Husqvarna Vit Pillen that they lent me, uh, in particular the in-depth review. That's a sort of, those videos take quite a lot of making. So that one's coming up. Uh, and then don't forget one for your diary, my next live stream, chance for you to chat to me live. Uh, always love doing those. That's on Monday, May the 20th at 8 p.m. UK time. If you can uh, join me then to have a chat about all things bikes, that'd be absolutely fantastic. All right, that's it for this time. Hope you've enjoyed that and uh, look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Mr. Them Fly. Cheerio. <laughs>